Well, traders, it's a bit early, but I'm, but I'm going to stop uh, trading for now. I've got uh, four trades uh, from which um, I have uh, three winners, a small winner in URBN, an OK winner with Tesla and a nice, a very nice winner with Facebook, uh, a loser in Beyond, which I would like to discuss now. And, um, you know, in closed trades, I've got almost five grand open trades, like uh, $300, uh, dollars, so just over $5,000. But what I would like to discuss, so it's a nice green day for me, but what I like to discuss is not my winners today, is my loser. And uh, my only loser today, one out of four, uh, which should be my average approximately, is beyond. And that's the one I want to discuss before I go away. Now let's start with the fact that uh, Beyond started up quite a bit. So Beyond gapped up a very nice gap up in Beyond right over here. It was on my list, on my watch list because it gapped up, it, because it looked great, uh, because uh, I really like the volume that came in. Look at the volume, the way it started. First candle is a big move up, then a small pullback. I knew I was taking a risk. I put it in the room for a long over 144. It's a whole number and it spiked up over the highs, but didn't do much. Uh, my target uh, was approximately one point. Uh, it did touch my target. I was not fast enough to take my partial, uh, but um, I also had a one point stop loss. And that's what I want to discuss uh, because I did not get my target. It was very close. I didn't get it. And then it came down, spiked down like crazy. So that's the real, that's the thing I really want to discuss, the way I handle it. Well, the first thing I should say is something I have talked about a few times today in the room. When you take a first trade at the second one minute candle, like I did here, over 144, surely it should be with small size. You can't trust the market direction, although the market was moving higher. You can't trust... Uh, you can't trust the stock direction, although the stock is moving higher. You just can't trust it. It's the first few minutes. Everything can happen and a lot did happen. So Beyond did spike up, did not get to my target and then spiked down like crazy. Now, I do have a stop. I did have a stop in mind because I do not use hard stops at 143. So my stop, my planned stop was to be under 143. Now, what happened is that the stock came down very, very strong and continued, look, all the way down to 141. So that was two points below my stop loss. I was looking at a one point stop loss and actually I got hit. I did not stop it uh, by another two points. So, so even though it was a very small size, just the beginning of the trading session, um, I got hit three times as much as I was expecting one, from one point stop loss to three point stop loss. And... Um, it really did came down, come down that strong. You never ever move out on, on spikes. Now you look at it and you wish you would because why shouldn't you have a stop at 143 and save yourself from another two point spike down? Well, I'll tell you why. Because when a stock is going your way, I mean, it's trending higher, you expect it to continue trending higher. It may not happen and it did not happen in beyond, but you expect it. And when it spikes down, you always look for a pullback and the pullback should be strong and quick. It's very rare that the pullback comes just two points later, like it did in beyond. But every once in a while, it happens and then you may have a bigger loser. But again, I do not move out of the trade because it spiked down. Now, this spike up that you're seeing here from 141 back to 14360 or so happened also very, very quickly. But just understand that you never know if it's going to come down at 141 right over here at the lows or it could possibly come down just when it came a few cents under my planned stop loss, which was 143. So if, for example, it came down to my stop loss a few more cents because I do not move out on spikes and spikes over the highs again, fine. I do not want spikes to take me out, even if they go down as much as Beyond did. Now, I did not feel comfortable. It was my first trade. It was three times bigger than I imagined it could be, but I was waiting. The thing is, you do not wait for it to move over the highs again, or you do not wait for it uh, until it comes back to green territory, for example. I did not expect it to come. Maybe it would. Maybe, I mean, after this spike up, it came up all the way to 14360. I was thinking maybe it will move over the highs. Maybe I just did a foolish thing by moving out here. Because again, when it came down to 141, 
I did not move out. I waited for it to pull back out and then I did move at 143, actually a few cents below 143. Now the thing I did here was not risk management anymore, it was loss management. I had a huge losses here at 141. I was waiting for it to spike up again. It did happen. Now I was not waiting for it to move over the highs. I was just waiting for it to come back uh, to a reasonable uh, stop loss, which was my planned stop loss at 143, which is approximately, as you can see, a 50% pullback, maybe even a bit more than 50% pullback. So it came down strong, pulled back up approximately 50%, came down again. Well, later what happened happened and then it came down, doesn't matter. The thing I'm discussing is what happened right over here. You never move out on the spike, you wait for it to come back up again, you do not wait for it to get back to green territory or even to become a winner because it's now trending lo lower. I, I, I definitely came to a conclusion that that was a wrong trade and the way it came down so strong, moved under the lows, it's very likely to continue coming down and it did continue coming down. So what you're looking for is a reduced loss. You waited for it to come down. There is a small reversal. It comes up again. I moved out at my planned loss, which was 143 or a few cents under. And then it came down again. I was really happy. Now what happens later, I don't know. It could have moved up over the highs, whatever. But at that point, I couldn't know what's coming next. What I did know that it came down strong, pulled back up. And that's it. That's what I should do. And that's what I did. And uh, just move out uh, where I should have moved out. And um, I'm uh, really happy that I managed it uh, this way. So if you take a look again at my PNL, um, I lost almost uh, three grand in beyond, just less than that. So I was, I believe, at a loss of around seven or maybe eight thousand dollars at that time. That was a very bad start, but I managed it correctly, I believe. It came up again and um, moved out. And later, I got a few winners, three winners. So I'm doing well for the day. Well, that's it. Uh, sometimes it's uh, more important to discuss the losers and the winners. Happy you've been trading with me today. Thank you very much for being here. Really enjoyed it. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you, traders. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to take Traders' free welcome course. It was designed to teach you the basics of Wall Street trading. Click here to sign up for this no-risk, no-cost offer. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.